The Elks National Foundation was the dream of past National President John F. Malley. Back in 1928, he envisioned a temple of philanthropy built on the cornerstones of integrity, knowledge, community, and charity. Today, the Foundation helps Elks build stronger communities by funding programs that honor the Elks Pledge to never forget our veterans, provide tomorrow's leaders with a healthy beginning, and fund projects that improve the quality of life where Elks live and work. The major national programs are our three scholarship programs, the Most Valuable Student, the Legacy Awards, the Emergency Educational Grants. We also fund the Elks National Veterans Services Commission, the Drug Awareness Program, the Hoop Shoot Program, as well as our local philanthropy, which is our state grants and our community investments program. Almost 90 cents out of every dollar is going directly to our programs. The standard for charities is no more than 35 cents per dollar, and we consistently spend less than 11 cents of every dollar on administrative expenses. The Veterans Service Commission is charged with fulfilling the Elks Pledge that so long as there are veterans, the Elks will never forget them. The Elks National Foundation funds 97% of the Elks National Veterans Service Commission programs. And these programs provide care and comfort to homeless and hospitalized veterans throughout the country. Uh, every war is going to have wounded people, and they come to the VA hospitals, and they get their service and their care, and it's a, it's a big thing with the Elks. Ever since the Iraq and Afghanistan wars, we've been working very closely with um, the younger veterans. It's just If you can think of something that a veteran would enjoy or need, the Elks are trying to provide it. Yes, ...and music videos. Our drug-free message is reinforced by the lovable mascot, Elroy the Elk. He's a fixture at our youth activities. We also provide kids with healthy, positive alternatives to drug use, like the soccer shoot and the hoop shoot. Uh, you need to practice a lot and focus. Well, at my school I practice 200 shots a day. I've learned how to deal with nerves and just keep on practicing and practicing. The hoop shoot is a program that actually builds character while promoting integrity and quality family time and good sportsmanship. And kids take a lot out of that. Well, it, it taught me at a young age the importance of hard work and how important practice and preparation is. Uh, the things I learned when I was nine years old have stuck with me until today. Well, I grew up with the Elks Lodge, actually. Um, I'm actually a fourth generation Elk, so I joined in December of 2008 as an Elk member. My father is an Elk, my grandfather was an Elk, and my great-grandfather was an Elk. And with the scholarship, um, I can take the time that I would have put forth to work rigorous work-study program and put it to community activities, volunteering on campus, as well as in the Washington, D.C. community. Our scholars go on to do all sorts of things. You know, um, and it's really neat to see that return on our investment. You know, we, we take a chance on these kids. We give them money, send them to school, and then it's up to them to, to make something of that opportunity. When I was a junior in high school, um, my dad, who was a firefighter, um, he was hurt in a fire. Um, he was fighting, and the roof collapsed, and he fell through, and he herniated a couple discs in his spine, um, and he had to be retired from the fire department. The foundation offers three scholarships. The Most Valuable Student, which is our largest scholarship, and then two that are specifically for Elks families, the Emergency Educational Grants and the Legacy Scholarship. I These students have, not only are they outstanding academically, they are um, pillars of their community at such a young age, and they've had some need in their life. Here I am, there's someone who's been able to get all of these opportunities thanks to the Elks Foundation. And there's the encouragement to go back and to give, and that's something that I hope to be able to do in the future. I like that the Elks, there's the, you know, the National Foundation, but then there's also very community-based things. There's a wide variety of community service projects out there. And once you start looking at some of the impact grants that the, that the ENF have started, they're pretty, they're pretty awesome. The Community Investments Program invests directly in communities where Elks live and work. And we do this through a couple grant components, the Gratitude Grants, the Promise Grants, and our Impact Grants. In looking back over my career 
in my own lodge, I think it's probably the neatest thing my lodge ever did. Our impact grant was for a program where we feed between 50 and 60 youngsters every week a place called the soup kitchen of the city of Wheeling. Our members come out, uh, they serve these kids, they prepare the food and serve it. Uh, we have programs for them, we help them with their homework. It covers about a three hour span every week. It makes you feel good inside, it really does. People want to give to the foundation. It never ceases to amaze me the good deeds that elks do across this country every day. I joined the order because I see the difference that elks make in communities and I'm so proud to be a part of that. We joined because of the social opportunities, uh, whether it's dances at, at our elks lodges or meals, family outings, whatever, something like that. But the more members uh, get involved with our elks clubs, our elks lodges, uh, they become more and more aware of the good that we're doing. and that all of a sudden becomes more and more important to them. And the engine that drives that entire program is the Elks National Foundation. Uh, so it's, it's the most important part of Elkton, really. Hi, this is Patrick Ethier, and I'm here with Angelo Migliori. Today, we are here at the Waterloo Elks Lodge for their annual Flag Day event. Uh, today, they will be displaying the flags and telling us a little bit of the history of the flag. Thank you, Angelo, and we hope to see you there. Hi, my name is Patrick Ethier, and I'm here with Angelo Migliori, and today we will be interviewing Mr. Jay Hessler, Press State Vice President from Cobasco Lodge, 2040. How are you doing today? I'm doing fine. How are you? Great. Uh, can you tell us about today? Well, today was a celebration of our flag. On June 14th of every year, this is a special day for Elks when we honor the United States flag. We provide a a visual history and a verbal and a verbal history of the evolution of the flag starting with our very first battle flags up through the American flag as it's flown today. And for Elks this is a special day. We've been doing this since 1908 on every June 14th. What does the flag stand for? <clears throat> the flag is the insignia and symbol of our nation. It means many th different things to many people, but for most of us, especially for those of us that are veterans and have fought in our foreign wars, the flag is a, a strong symbol of, of loyalty, of valor, and a strong symbol of those who have given their lives in support of this country. What do the Elk members do to promote patriotism? Well, as, as we've just noted, we do, a, do an annual Flag Day. We support every Memorial Day event that we can on Memorial Day. We have veterans programs. Uh, in addition to just celebrating Veterans Day, we provide volunteer services at the VA hospital. We provide comfort items to the veterans down there. At Stratton Memorial VA Hospital in Albany, every single weekend, there are four 
elk volunteers that keep the volunteer office open down there and the different lodges in the New York State Capital District area from all the way up to, uh, by Warrensburg all the way down to almost to Poughkeepsie take a turn serving ice cream and popcorn to the veterans on Saturdays and Sundays. We provide phone cards and comfort items to our veterans serving overseas in Iraq and Afghanistan. And that's just some of the things that we do. What is the main role of an elk? I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't hear the question. What is the main role of an elk? The main role of an elk is to support our communities and to support our veterans. One of our, one of our watchwords is that as long as there are veterans, there will be elks there supporting them. What role does the Elks play in this community? This lodge and the Elks play a very large role in the community. The Elks, through their Elks National Foundation uh, out of the Grand Lodge in Chicago, has a very large endowment fund that provides, like this year, they provided over $4 million worth of scholarships to worthy students just this year alone. Next to the federal government, we're the second largest provider of scholarships. That's one thing. We provide the national hoop shoot, the national soccer shoot. We do Americanism contests, essay contests, like you saw the winner here today receive an award. Those are some of the things that we do. What are the requirements to become a member of the Elks? To be an Elk, you have to be 21. You have to be an American citizen. You have to be willing to declare your belief in God and your willingness to salute the flag, and you have to be asked. What other organizations do the Elk support? The Elks will provide support to other organizations. Sometimes we team up with the American Legion or the Eagles to do joint events in support of veterans or or a community support type event like a donation for a hospital or some, or Boy Scouts. We do support Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts. Uh, they use our lodges and, and we're glad that they can do that. How do you dispose of flag? The proper disposal of an American flag is done by burning it in an elk. We, we use a, an elk ceremony to burn the flag. We have a special burn barrel and we shred the flags and burn them. How do you display a flag the proper way? Well, there are m many different circumstances under which you want to display a flag. There's a protocol for displaying a flag on an altar like this. It goes to the right of the speaker as, as you're facing the platform. For those of us that ride motorcycles, if you're riding a motorcycle and you look at the flags, like you see these guys going down with a uh, missing in action or POW flag, if you're behind the motorcycle, a POW flag goes on the left. The American flag goes on the right. And there are other flag protocols, like for hanging a flag from a building or on a flagpole. And I don't remember exactly what they are, but you can go online and, and Google flag protocol, and it'll tell you everything you need to do. When is it uh, an appropriate time to salute a flag? The appropriate time to salute a flag is if you are attending a parade, when the flag passes you, it's the same as the flag passing in review, and, and you, the proper protocol would be to stand. If you're a civilian, you place your hand over your heart. If you, or if you're wearing a hat, you can take your hat off and place it over your heart. If you're in uniform, whether you're a policeman or military, you stand and you salute the flag from just before it reaches you until after it passes you. In assemblies, when asked during the Pledge of Allegiance, during the Star Spangled Banner, are all appropriate times to salute the flag. How do you become a lodge officer at the Elks? You can ask. And in often cases, the lodge will ask you. Uh, it's, 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 being an officer is, is a commitment in terms of time and energy. 
and every once in a while somebody gets so busy that they can't continue being a lodge officer, so there'll be a vacancy, and the exalted ruler usually will ask you if you'd like to fill that position. What is a trustee, and what are the steps to become one? The trustees of a lodge are responsible for all aspects of maintaining the facility. The, if, you, if it was a, a commercial establishment, you'd call it the plant. They're, they're responsible for maintaining the plant, making sure the building is well taken care of. And they also kind of keep their pulse on the fingers of lodge finances, although that's not their specific responsibility. They are kind of like the lodge overseers. Thank you very much, and uh, have a great day. And thank you very much. It was a nice interview. Thank you. I would ask I would ask that yes I would ask that before we get started you would please if you would please turn off all cell phones and pagers uh, Lord knows I've had mine off since last night at about eight o'clock we're here for the flag day ceremony please be seated My brothers and sisters, ladies and friends, the purpose of this service is to honor our country's flag, to celebrate the anniversary of its birth, and to recall the achievements attained beneath its folds. It is quite appropriate that such a service should be held by the Order of Elks, an organization that is distinctively American, intensely patriotic, and without counterpart. Please stand. State Vice President John Cochin from Colony 2192 will lead us in prayer. Please bow your head. Almighty God, in this hour of patriotism, observation of the birthday of the American flag, we ask you to bless our flag and the people of those these United States, for all that our flag represents, both at home and abroad, we thank thee, and that our history as a nation has been an instant of freedom, liberty, and opportunity. And through the years to come, may this flag wave as the banner of liberty, freedom, and enlightenment. May your service bring to each of us a sense of loyalty to our country and enable us to be better patriot, patriots, true citizens, and more loyal Americans to the glory and to the honor of this great nation. Amen. Amen. Please unite in singing the Star Spangled Banner.
steam leading night. Now that you're sad. What are the fraternal aims of the benevolent and protective Order of Elks? Esteem leading night, what is the significance of the American flag? It is emblematic of the crowning virtue of charity. Esteem loyal night, what is the significance of the American flag? It is emblematic of justice for all. Esteem lecturing night, what is the significance of the American flag? Lodge Esquire. What is the significance of the flag from the station of the exalted ruler? It is a symbol of fidelity. Charity, justice, brotherly love, and fidelity are the cardinal principles of our order, and they are exemplified in all of our services. By them we teach love of country and of our countrymen, and loyalty to our American way of life. To be an elk is to be an American citizen who lives for his country and is ready to die for it. Please be seated. That we may better understand the meaning of our flag, I call upon past district deputy, Grand Exalted Ruler Joseph D. Benoit, for the history of, of the flag. Heraldry is as old as the human race. The carrying of banners has been a custom among all peoples in all ages. These banners usually contain some concept of the life or government of those who fashion them. The evolution of the American flag marks the progression of the government of the American people. From the founding of Jamestown in Virginia in 1607 until 1775, the flag of England was the flag of the peoples of America. In 1775, the pine flag was adopted for all colonial vessels. And this was the banner carried by the Continental Forces in the Battle of Bunker Hill. Please present that flag. The southern colonies from 1776 to 1777 used the snake flag. Please present that flag.
In the latter part of 1775, the Continental Congress appointed a committee to consider the question of a single flag for the 13 colonies. The committee recommended a design of 13 alternate stripes of red and white, with an azure field in the upper corner bearing the Red Cross of St. George and the White Cross of St. Andrew. John Paul Jones, the senior lieutenant of the flagship Alfred, hoisted this flag to the masthead on December 3rd, 1775, and one month later, it was raised over the headquarters of General Washington at Cambridge, Massachusetts, in compliment, as he wrote, to the United Colonies. Please present this flag. This flag, called the Continental Colors and the Grand Union, was never carried in the field by the Continental Land Forces, but it was used by the Navy as its exclusive ensign and was first the American flag to receive a salute of honor, a salute of 11 guns from the Fort of Orange in the Dutch West Indies. In response to a general demand for a banner more representative of our country, the Congress on June 14, 1777 provided that the flag of the United States be 13 stripes of alternate red and white and that the Union be 13 stars, white on a blue field, representing a new constellation. Please present this flag. It is generally believed that in May or June of 1776, a committee consisting of George Washington, Robert Morris, and George Ross commissioned Betsy Ross, a Philadelphia Quakeress, to make a flag from a rough design they left with her. It is said that she suggested that the stars should have five points rather than six. This starry banner was first flown at Fort Stanwix, called Fort Schuyler at that time, near the city of Rome, New York, on August 3rd, 1777, and was under fire three days later at the Battle of Oriskany, August 6th, 1777, during a British and Indian attack. The first official salute to the Stars and Stripes was given on February 14, 1778 by France on the French coast when the Ranger, under command of John Paul Jones, was saluted by the French fleet. This flag, then carried by the Ranger, was made by the young women of Portsmouth, New Hampshire, from stripes of their best colored silk dresses and the white wedding gown of a recent bride. It is said that this same ranger's flag was flown by Joan's ship, the Bonhomme Richard, 
in its thrilling fight by moonlight upon the high seas with the British frigate Serapis. When the Serapis struck her colors, the immortal fame of John Paul Jones was ensured as the intrepid defender of the youthful republic. The original 13 stars and stripes represented the original 13 colonies. In 1795, two additional stars and stripes was added to represent admission to the Union of Vermont and Kentucky. Under this banner of 15 stars and stripes was fought the War of 1812. It was the sight of it flying over Fort McHenry on September 14, 1814, that inspired Francis Scott Key to write what was to become our national anthem, the Star Spangled Banner. Miss Margaret Young, who cut the stars for that particular banner, was the mother of Henry Saunderson, the grand exalted ruler of the Order of Elks in 1884. Please present this flag. <coughs> The Congress, on April 14, 1818, adopted a resolution that on and after July 4, 1818, the number of stripes should be 13, and that the blue field should carry one star for each of the 20 states in the Union, and that a new star should be added for each state thereafter admitted. Please present this flag. The Congress, on April 14, 1818, adopted a resolution that on and after July 4, 1818, the number of stripes, excuse me, since 1818, there has been no change in the flag design concept, that 28 new stars were added before July 4, 1912. And this flag of 48 stars flew over this nation for 47 years until just before the Vietnam War. Please present this flag.
On July 4, 1959, a star was added for Alaska, our first non-connected state. And a year later, Hawaii, our island state, added a 50th star. Our present flag, 50 stars and 13 stripes. It is accompanied by the POW MIA flag to recognize the plight and demise of a special group of our armed services, those who were prisoners of war or still remain missing in action. Please present these flags. Please stand and salute our flag. As this emblem is first in our hearts as loyal Americans, so it is close to our altar as loyal Elks. The gentle breezes with lingering caress kiss the folds of no flag which can compare with it in beauty. There is no such red in budding rose, in fallen leaf, or sparkling wine. No such white in April blossom, in crescent moon or mountain snow, no such blue in woman's eye, in ocean's depth or heaven's dome, and no such pageantry of clustering stars or streaming light in all the spectrum of the sea and sky. Please be seated. I'd like to uh, thank our color guard for this afternoon. We have George McNeff Sr., George McNeff Jr., Tony Rosano, Paul Bombard, and Jimmy Rice. Thank you very much, guys. Our flag is at once a history, a declaration, and a prophecy. It represents the American nation as it was at its birth. It speaks for what it is today, and it holds the opportunity for the future to add other stars to the glorious constellation. The benevolent and protective order of Elks is the first and only fraternal body to require formal observance of Flag Day. In July of 1908, the Grand Lodge of the Order at Dallas, Texas, then assembled, provided for the annual nationwide observance of Flag Day on the 14th of June in each year, by making it mandatory upon each subordinate lodge of the Order. This unique distinction as the strongest promoter of Flag Day is most becoming to the Order of Elks. This order is distinctively American. Only American citizens are eligible to join it, and it has no foreign affiliation. It has linked its destiny with the destiny of our country and made this flag its symbol of self-dedication to God, to country, and to fellow men. For, this, for the response this afternoon, I call upon Brother Bruce Headley, past state president. The stars and stripes 
flag of the United States of America. This worldwide hope of all who under God would be free to live and do his will. Upon its folds is written the story of America, the epic of the mightiest and noblest in all history. In the days when peoples of the old world groveled in abject homage to the heresy of the divine right of kings, a new constellation appeared in the western scars, the stars and stripes, symbolizing the divine right of all men to life, liberty, happiness, and peace under endowment by their creator. To what man or woman is given words adequate to tell the story of the building of this nation? That immortal story is written in blood and sweat, in heroic deeds and unremitting toil, in clearing the primeval forests and in planting of vast prairies where once the coyote and buffalo roamed. Onward swept the nation, spanning wide rivers, leaping vast mountain ranges, leaving in its path villages and farms, factories and cities, till at last this giant nation stood astride the continent from the Atlantic to the Pacific. This is the heritage of the people of the United States of America. It has been repurchased by each succeeding generation and must be rewon again, again and again until the end of time, lest to it shall pass like the ancient emperors of Greece and Rome. The price of liberty is eternal vigilance. What was won at Lexington and Concord and Bunker Hill had to be repurchased at Ticonderoga and Yorktown. What John Paul Jones achieved upon the high seas in the War of the Independence had to be repurchased by Commodore Perry on Lake Erie in the War of 1812. The prestige of Admiral Dewey's victory at Manila Bay in 1898 was rewon by the naval battles in the seas about the far distant islands of the Pacific. After the sneak attacks upon Pearl Harbor and Manila in 1941 had summoned our country to assume its role in World War II. What our troops achieved under the Stars and Stripes at Chatham Theory and Flanders of World War I, their sons were required to repurchase in World War II, in the bloody trek across northern Africa, on the beachheads of Europe, and in the Battle of the Bulge. The flag of our American men raised at Iwo Jima was the same flag later raised in the defense of Incheon, Pusan, and Pork Chop Hill in far off Korea. Then another generation under the same flag bled to the stem the threat of communism in far off Vietnam. Our young people were again called to carry our flag in the defense of a free world in the actions in Grenada and Panama. Willingly, our brave men and women carried our flag and the honor of the American people into the operation of Desert Storm. And among us, who will ever forget the sight of our firefighters raising our flag over the ruins of the World Trade Center? The military personnel draping our flag on the side of the Pentagon, or the citizens of Somerset County, Pennsylvania, placing our flag near the site where the brave Americans died fighting the hijackers of Flight 93. No other symbol could have offered such comfort as we still, today, endure the honors of that day. Today, American forces carry our flag in the villages of Iraq, the mountains of Afghanistan, and the jungles of the Philippines, and wherever terror may reside. Their struggle against the sponsors of terrorism is the hardest battle yet, and this threat to our nation and to our way of life is certainly a great challenge as our flag has ever seen. The resurgence of patriotism since September 11, 2001 has rekindled, rekindled respect for our flag. 
Today, we see the star-spangled banner wherever we turn, on homes, businesses, automobiles, and billboards. Such displays stimulate our love for our nation and for what it stands. They remind us of the sacrifices being made by the men and women of our armed forces around the world. And they are a tribute to the heroes of the police and fire departments, our nation over. The greatest significance of this flag, however, lies in the influence it has in the hearts and minds of millions of people. It has waved over unparalleled progress of a nation in developing democratic institution, scientific and technological knowledge, education, and culture. It has served as a beacon for millions of poor and oppressed refugees abroad and stands as a promise that underprivileged will not be forgotten. What is the meaning of the flag of the United States? There can never be a definitive answer to that question. There are people in this world who see it as a symbol of imperialism. Others see it as a destiny of the people. But reference to these and similar views of the flag was resolved by Woodrow Wilson when he said, this flag, which we honor and under which we serve, is the emblem of our unity, our power, our thought and shape of this nation. It has no other character than that which we give it from generation to generation. The choices are ours. Only love, true love for our fellow man can create peace the emblem and token that is the stars and stripes, the symbol of the American life. Our fathers, God to thee, author of liberty, to thee we sing. Long may our land be bright with freedom's holy light. Protect us thy might, great God, our King. Lodge Squire. How shall we further honor our flag? Let us all stand and pledge ourselves never, for, never to forget the principles represented by this flag. Past State President Bruce Hidley will lead us in the pledge. Please recite with me the Elks Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. In 1977, Jay was commissioned as Chief Warrant Officer and awarded a Bachelor of Science degree in management from George Washington University. He continued working in the field of naval weapons systems and served numerous tours of duty at, at sea and on cruisers and destroyers. His final assignment was teaching at the Navy Department Head School at Newport, Rhode Island. After 31 years of active duty, Jay retired in 1992 with the rank of Lieutenant Commander. Jay and his wife Donna met in Honolulu, Hawaii and were married on the grounds of Queen Lalani, thank you, Palace in February 1982. While Jay continued to serve in the Navy, 
They lived in Honolulu, Yokushika, Japan, and Alexandria, Virginia, and Newport, Rhode Island. Jay and Donna currently reside in Summit, New York, where they have lived since 1991. They have two grown children, Kyle and Matthew, and one grandson, Jacob, who was four. Jay? Thank you for your nice introduction, Exalted Ruler Ed. Best stage President Bruce, Exalted Ruler Ed, honored guests, members all. Once again, I find myself assembled here at Water Vliet with my friends and fellow Elks. And what better place can there be to spend your time than that? Thank you. As you have seen, our Flag Day ceremony provides a vivid presentation of the evolution of our flag and its history. I would like to add a few personal thoughts and some additional Elks history to that. Webster's defines a flag as a piece of cloth, usually rectangular, of distinctive color and design, used as a symbol, standard, signal, or emblem. Some would have us believe that it is nothing more than just cloth sewn in a distinct colorful pattern and deserves no more respect than an old tablecloth or a t-shirt. Our flag with its red and white stripes and white stars on a field of blue certainly meets Webster's definition. But to me and many others, it's more than just a piece of cloth and it deserves our utmost respect. In its red, I see the blood of all who fought and died to create our nation, all who defended against our enemies and those who currently serve in our armed forces. In its white, I see the purity of the intent of our founding fathers to provide us with rights previously unknown to the citizens of any other nation. And in its blue, I see the great sea of humanity that migrated here from every country in the world to prosper in freedom. Every one of you probably has your own thoughts and vision of what the flag means. But I'm thinking that your feelings about it will probably be strongly held. Prior to the onset of the Civil War, the flag was used primarily as a military ensign or for the marking of U.S. territory, flown from forts and office buildings, and flown on holidays like the 4th of July. Most were individually handmade by seamstresses on a commission basis as needed. The Civil War changed that in a big way. The 33-star garrison flag that Major Anderson of the Army of the United States flew over Fort Sumter in December of 1860 in defiance of the newly declared Confederate States of America became in the ensuing weeks and months the rallying symbol of the Union and was flown throughout the North. All of a sudden, with the flag in large demand, people began mass producing it and it was flown from not only public buildings, but private buildings and private property throughout the North. By the end of the war, the flag was the national symbol of sovereignty for a union and had survived five years of bloodshed. Since then, millions of our servicemen and women have fought and hundreds of thousands died in its service. The benevolent and protective order of Elks involvement with the flag day began began at the Grand Lodge session in Philadelphia in 1907, when the then Grand Exalted Ruler first suggested to our order that Elks celebrate the flag. June 14th was the day of choice and was called Elks Flag Day. The Flag Day ritual was approved the following year, 1908 at Grand Lodge in Dallas, and in 1911 at the Grand Lodge session at Atlantic City, the observance of Flag Day was made mandatory for subordinate lodges. In 1930, at the Grand Lodge session in Atlantic City, Section 229 of the statutes was amended to permit the Grand Exalted Ruler, quote, in exceptional cases and for a good cause, grant a dispensation for a different day or to any two or more lodges to hold these services jointly, unquote. Flag Day was not officially recognized by our government until August 3, 1949, 
when President Truman signed Public Law 203, uh, designating June 14th as Flag Day. Not only were the Elks the first fraternal, for fraternal organization to celebrate Flag Day, but had been doing so on June 14th for over 40 years, a tradition that is in keeping with our Americanism and veterans programs. Over the years, I've read many inspiring descriptions of the flag, probably none more so than those describing the inspiration it provided to our Marines when they saw it raised on Mount Suribachi on Iwo Jima. When I see it raised in the morning, I feel a great sense of pride knowing that it still flies. And when I see it lowered in the evening to the sound of taps, I'm reminded of the full price paid by all who fell in support of it. God bless our flag. God bless the benevolent and protective order of Elks. And God bless the United States of America. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. In, a, in attendance with us today, we have State Vice President John Cochin, District Designate Jay, uh, District Deputy Designate Jay Hessler. Past State Vice President Pedro, uh, no, Pedro's not here. He couldn't be with us today. I'm sorry. From the city of Waterville, or I'm sorry, from Albany County, uh, we have legislature, legislator Bob Beston. Thank you. From uh, the city of Waterville, Councilwoman Ellen Fogarty, City Court Judge Tom Lamb. Also with us today is past State President Bruce Hidley, and District Americanism, Helen Blaze, and uh, State Chairman for Americanism, Mel Oliveira. And we're almost out of here, so bear with me. At this time, I would like to introduce Connor Price. Connor is an eighth grade student at Manan School. He's the largest first place winner as well as the district first place winner in the Elks Americanism contest. Connor's topic for his essay was why I am proud to pledge allegiance to our flag. The Lodge presented Connor with a gift and I would like to present him with a certificate and a gift from the district. Lodge Esquire. Would you please conduct Connor to the altar for the presentation? Okay, and after that, would you please escort Mel Oliveira to present the award? Squire, I have one more presentation. Could, uh, could you, could you uh, escort Brother Jim Shepard to the altar, please? Jim, he's over there in the spreadsheet. Okay, we thank uh, our guest speaker, Jay. Thank you very much. Also, thanks to Nancy Caswell, the publicity chairman. Chairwoman, and thank you, Patricia Moran, the chairperson for today. There will be a buffet downstairs, and we're going to go down there very shortly. And it is, it is air conditioned, so that, that'll be it. 
Oh, sure. Eddie Rice wouldn't let us down. He's, he's down there now. In conclusion of this observance of Flag Day, let us rededicate ourselves to the flag of the United States and of America, and may the principles of charity, justice, brotherly love, and fidelity ever increase in each of us. I now declare this service closed. Beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of grain. When these words were written, they described the greatness our forefathers saw in the future of our nation. And as our nation finds itself faced with uncertainties, nothing seems more fitting than to ponder the importance of our fates, our families, and our freedoms. I'd like to thank you kids for doing such a wonderful job today. I'd like to thank Mr. Hessler for being my guest speaker and my best friend buddy, John Coach from Colony for being our doing the invocation today. I hope you kids have gotten something out of this. And I know you want to become an elk, right? Yeah, he wants to. But we've already got a future member. So thank you again, kids, and it's been a pleasure. Thank you, Jay, and thank you, John. Thank you. All right, thank you for asking me. Yeah. Thank you for watching this presentation of WVLT, and um, we hope you enjoyed this presentation. Hi, this is Ed Quackenbush from Water Valley Elks. I just wanted to let you know some of the things that the Elks do for the city of Water Valley. We have the Dictionary Projects. 
which uh, presents the third grades of uh, Water Elite and Heatley with dictionaries. Uh, the drug awareness uh, to try to keep kids away from drugs. Well, we have Flag Day. Uh, the Hoop Shoot, which is well known in Water Elite with Chris Dawes. Our major projects, cerebral palsy, the Elk Scholarships, Veteran Services, the Water Elite Food Pantry, uh, we also give back to the Boy Scouts, the high school graduation awards, and the sports teams. Uh, we need your support for various fundraisers that we have here in Water Elite, and uh, most, most of the funds are returned right back to the city. So any help you can give us would be greatly appreciated. Thank you very much.